Good day, fellow skiers. In this video, I'm very excited to share with you a bunch of knowledge about how you can effectively apply strength and conditioning to support your skiing. So today we're here at the LPM Fitness Center and I got my friend Ian here. You got a master's degree in strength and conditioning, which he is actually applying to the Stomp It coaching team to make sure we are all fit for winter. That's right. And to make that process easier, I've put together four pillars that makes up a strength and conditioning program that will transfer over to skiing. And those four pillars are activation, plyometrics, ballistics, and a strength split. Activation. It sounds kind of obvious, like a warm up, but can you tell us a bit more about it? Essentially, we want to elevate the heart rate, create a readiness to train and an alertness by using three key principles, which are proprioception, coordination, and mind muscle connection. Essentially, just feeling the body where it is in space and time prior to any workout. Maybe you're wondering, what is your top tip on a good activation? Okay, so one tip I would say is that, you know, Obviously be present in the activation, try to feel the muscle groups you're about to start working, but don't spend too long because this can have a detrimental effect on power output as you're going into the workout. Okay. Maybe you like me might be like, hmm, plyometrics. What is it and how does it apply to our skiing, Ian? Okay, so plyometrics or the shock method was created by Russian scientist Yuri Verkashansky to improve the performance in athletic training. And essentially what we're doing is we are loading and unloading the tendons and muscles through quick succession. Let's think about how this applies to our skiing. Plyometrics, is it fair to say that it's kind of stiffening my tendons to become more like a tight or stiff spring? So if I'm skiing over like chattering terrain, I will absorb it better or react faster. Exactly. So we can use the spring analogy and it's a, it's a pretty good one. So a soft floppy spring, not going to be able to put through much, too much force through it versus a stiffer spring, which is going to really accept more force and push that, those forces back through the ground. So this is a, exactly why we need to use plyometrics for skiing. Let's go to pillar number three, ballistics. Wow, sounds like we're going to war or something. What is it? Okay, so ballistics. Plyometrics and ballistics, there is some crossover. Ballistics could be basically any kind of explosive exercise. And essentially the difference between the two is that plyometrics have less ground contact time. Ballistics generally or explosive exercise generally have a little bit more ground contact time. So it's the springy thing versus the more energy from the ground and up. Could you say it's like um, a skipping rope is the plyometrics and then like jumping up on a box would be ballistic? Exactly. So how do you think that ballistics, plyometrics can transfer over into skiing? Well, is it fair to say that ballistics is kind of like the gun going off and the sprinter going running? Exactly. All right. So with a sprinter, I guess that that gun is kind of instantly connected to the legs and they're really good at making movement happen. When we're skiing, say towards a jump, you got that end of the jump. That's where you have to take off, have a nice pop and move into a trick. So yeah, I think it totally makes sense. So as a side note, what's really important here is to think about injury resilience. And this is really important for skiing in particular. So we can react quicker, therefore there's less chance of crashing and injury risk. Ah. Pillar four, strength and conditioning. Something I've been doing for years that makes the most sense for me, as you can tell, with this 0.5 kilo weight. Ian, tell us more about this. Okay, so yeah, obviously this is the meat and potatoes of training, what most people understand as training. Um, and this is where we're going to work on things like bilateral, unilateral, and then whole body exercises um, combined with various set and rep ranges. Nice. Let's look at those in a bit more detail now. Okay, so let's have a look at some planes of motion so that this kind of makes sense. So if we take this really heavy kettlebell and we look at a squat, for example, as a bilateral movement, we're going down with both legs and up. If we look at a lunge, it's a unilateral exercise. So we're going backwards and down. So both legs versus one leg. It can also be arms too. When we want to look at the movement itself, eccentric is going down. 
isometric or pausing, and then concentric going back up again. So how does all the strength training affect the body? Okay, so in a nutshell, what we're doing is we're increasing cross-sectional area of muscle mass and making it stronger and creating more ability for it to absorb those forces. Like a heavy landing or something like that. Exactly. Nice. All right, now we've got a rough understanding of these four pillars, but let's learn how to piece it all together. Okay, so typically for a strength and conditioning program, you want to do a needs analysis for the athlete and a needs analysis for the sport. So can you think of any kind of typical movements that you might use in skiing? Ooh, uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is like a calf turn. Mm -hmm. Maybe a short turn is a bit different. Yeah. And I'm a freestyle skier, so a jump and a landing, obviously. Okay, good. So show me a calf turn. All right. They look something like this at one extreme and then quickly over to the other side. Right. Roughly like that. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at the four pillars and how they transfer into a calf turn and some exercises that we can do for that. So most typically we're looking at obviously core strength and then we're looking at the muscles on the inside of the legs and the outside of the legs. So here we have activation, we have band work for the plyometric lateral bounding, for the ballistic lateral step overs and for the strength part we have a Copenhagen plank and step downs and these are just some of the exercises that you can do. If you want to learn more about strength training for skiing, check out the link in the description where Ian prepared a strength training program for skiers like myself. This program is very much like what he has done for me in the Stomp It freestyle coaches. And I hope it's going to bring you lots of strength and luck in your skiing. Back to the video now. Okay, cool. So show me a short turn or a powder turn. Yeah, so with a short turn, it's kind of hard to show in here, but the way I like people to think about it least, is that they're like rotating the feet and the legs in the hip socket while maintaining like really good core stability so you can allow the legs to rotate below you. That's more or less how you short turn. Sounds good. How do you train for that? Okay, so let's convert this short or powder turn from the four pillars into an exercise. So with activation, we're going lunge twist or 90-90, plyometric line hop or plate hop, ballistic landmine split jerks or contralateral, and then palov and the contralateral RDL. So these things are going across the body. Just some of the exercises we could use. Okay, so Jens, talk to me about jumping. Well, this one is going to be pretty easy to show compared to the short turn. You just go down and up again. Okay, and is that more leaning forward or backwards? Well, I think of it being rather central, but as I take off, it's definitely more from the toes. And I explode up, land on the toes a little bit, and then down on the heel. Leg. All right, cool. Yeah. All right, so let's look at vertical jumping and landing. So four pillars, exercise, activation. We're gonna look at inchworms to squat and world's greatest stretch. We're gonna look at squat jump for plyometrics, med ball slams for the ballistic, and then split squats and tempo squats for the strength part. So on top of the analysis for the sport, we also need to do an analysis for the athlete. 
And in the case of Jens, we can do some simple testing by using an accelerometer to see how much force he's putting through the ground and also a small load cell where we can cheaply and efficiently measure the symmetry between muscles in the quad and the hamstring. Um, and we can do this intermittently through a training cycle. In the case of Jens, his jump height is good and his quad to hamstring ratio is also good. He's a strong guy. I hope it makes sense to you how I'm thinking about this ski movement and how Ian relates that to the training. But let's have Ian explain to us sets and rep ranges and how to really apply it. Right on. So let's try and keep it simple. So we're using volume and intensity, right? So sets and reps and then the intensity of the exercise, whether that be by load or by time. So essentially work rest periods. For your activation, which is pillar one, two to three minutes at maximum you should be spending. If you're a little bit more tired, maybe you can spend a little bit more time working into it. Otherwise, do the bare minimum so that you're fresh going into your plyometrics. Generally, we're gonna be doing two to five sets of around six to 15 reps, depending on the exercise. As a beginner, 80 to 100 foot contacts. Rest period, half a minute to two minutes. Again, depending on the exercise. Ballistics, two to five sets, three to eight reps. Okay, so more contact time. So they're gonna be um, less rep ranges on that. One to two minutes rest. Strength, two to five sets, six to 30 reps, including some tempo stuff. Again, you go one to five minutes rest on that. So when we're looking at that, we're also looking at how do we measure how much intensity, how much load. We use something called RPE. This stands for rate of perceived exertion. It takes practice. So in the beginning, we're mostly just gonna progress via more sets, more reps, maybe a little bit of load until you've got a better feel for the exercises. So that's all the fun stuff in the gym. What about outside of the gym, stuff like endurance? Okay, so I know that you like to go biking and that's important that you do those things and we're strength training for something, right? So obviously if your strength cycle is a little bit more intense then you wanna leave the gap a little bit longer between those kind of sessions. And theoretically, if you got your endurance done in the morning, left like a six hour gap and then did your strength training, that would be okay. But obviously being smart about it, managing your fatigue, if you're sore, if you're tired, you know, backing off and just focusing on what's important. And how long distance between uh, the strength sessions? I mean, 36 to 48 hours, but sometimes up to 72. For those more exhausting things like plyometrics, if you've you know, gone through a, a, a more intense cycle of those, anywhere up to 72 hours. But if you're doing two to three sessions, you should be able to get that in within the week. Well, I'm on nutrition for building a nice body. Okay, so nutrition, it's like religion <laughs> Let's and not politics. Get in there. Like, yeah, we don't really <laughs> want to get too much into it. Research says that obviously we need protein, it's the building block, the foundations of the human body. So 1.5 to 2 grams per kilogram of body weight, okay, per day. And um, so if you're 80 kilos, it's 160 grams of protein per day. It might seem like a lot, but you know, if you get complete sources, then it should work out. And there's some carbohydrates post-training really gonna help shuttle those nutrition, uh, shuttle the nutrition around your body um, and get you recovering faster. Nice. Any other little bits? Yeah, recovery, I suppose. Um, sleeping, you know, it's a big one, seven to 10 hours. Um, ideally before midnight. Um, yeah, getting as much of that as possible, right? Yeah, I feel like that takes care of yourself. If you start strength training and if, like me, also do some endurance, it takes care of itself. It makes you tired so you'll sleep. Yeah. So that was a lot of information to condense into a small amount of time, but we hope that you got something out of it and something that's going to help you perform better on the slopes. If you want to start training right now, check out the link in the description. Ian has prepared a program very similar to what he's doing with me and the other coaches here at Stompet Camps. And you can get started right now. If you want to wait a little bit, soon there will be two more videos out with in-depth like strength training routines based on this stuff that you can follow along with. See you then. Ciao.